Stiefel's Barry Bannister is looking for this S&P to rise 13% in the next six months. Peak Fed hawkishness is in the price, expect inflation to cool, delaying recession into mid-23 and lifting the S&P 500 to 4,300 in the next six months. Barry joins us right now. Barry was excited for this, the road to 4,300, so let's get to it. You say we've discounted the rate hiking cycle. Let's talk about the economic weakness. How do you manage that? You just push it out to 23 and ignore it until when? No, the economy is slowing, and you want that. You want inflation to slow as well, and so does the Fed. The question is, you know, as Sam Zell once said, every day you don't sell, you buy. And every day that the Fed doesn't turn the volume dial of tightening to the right, they're actually easing. And I don't expect incremental tightening, Not certainly not beyond what's already in Fed funds futures. It's not necessary. Uh, you know, if I can break down with Thomas Carroll the inflation into energy, food, goods, durable and non-durable, as well as shelter and non-energy, non-utility services, and then find leading indicators, all of which point down for inflation, then the Fed can do the same. And they know inflation is going to come down. Uh, so the slowing economy, uh, uh, Former Chair Yellen's comments at Treasury the other day about bond market uh, concerns at the Treasury. All of this gives cover to the Fed, I think, to uh, move towards not tightening further. And in fact, in the first half of 23, possibly taking one or two of those rate hikes uh, close to 5% out of futures. It isn't necessary. We're going to get lower inflation and lower growth, but it's not a classical recession. So, Barry, talk to me about how you ultimately play this through the equity market. Let's Let's take a data point this morning. House price growth comes in weaker, softer, negative, worse than expected. Bonds rally, yields lower by 14 basis points. In that kind of world, what do I want to own in the equity market, the cyclicals or the big tech names? Which one is it? Well, as you know, the stock market is just a, a trade-off between two questions, economic growth, which drives earnings, and inflation, which drives your multiple. So price earnings times your earnings. That's your price. Uh, if you look at where we see inflation going, it's lower. So disinflation from a very high inflation environment. And if you look at economic growth, we do think it's weak. But again, a recession is income, production, employment, investment, uh, and sales, I don't see that kind of universal weakness that you would classify as an NBER recession. Uh, so if I think the economy is slightly better and inflation is weaker, it pushes you back into growth stocks, and that would be big tech. So we'll see how the earnings are this week. Uh, you also want some cyclicals, though. I, I think the economy uh, is oversold, and uh, typically October to the following April, they're pretty good trades. It's a bad thing to fight that, just like it's a bad thing to fight the Fed. And so I like uh, early cycles cyclicals. These would be banks, even housing for the intrepid, uh, and uh, semiconductor short cycle cyclicals. So I would go with cyclical, and I would go with uh, a combination of growth and value. And Barry, when you say the economy is oversold, let's build that out just a little bit more. I'm looking at high yield spreads at about 500 basis points. Historically, sort of slap bang on the average kind of spread you'd expect, and certainly not the kind of spread you'd expect in a recession. Can you learn anything from credit here whatsoever, Barry? Well, I look at high yield and IG, and the spreads are up, but they're certainly not worse than they were in uh, the last decade. You think about 2011, 12, 2015, 16, 2018, uh, we had some pretty big spikes there in, uh, in yields and spreads. Uh, but if I look at the, uh, uh, the leading indicators for that, I don't see the kind of weakness in the default rate implied in those spreads that would justify a uh, hair on fire panic moment here. I think the market is going to see a slowdown, is already discounted a slowdown, and the question is, is it going to get substantially worse and cascade into a recession? I don't think that's going to happen before middle uh, to third quarter of 23, and that depends on what the Fed does really in the next six months. So Barry, of course, it comes to the price of the story, and I think the Fed game and the game around economic weakness feel like two different games. Barry, when you say to me we've priced in the bulk of the hiking cycle with a peak of Fed funds at 5%, I think most people would agree with you. When it comes to the consequences of that, the economic weakness associated with it, if you look at asset classes right now and ask yourself, how far are we on the road towards adjusting to a weaker world of economic growth? Some people push back against that barrier and point to credit spreads and just say, we haven't done the hard work yet. What do you say back to them? 
Well, uh, back to the spreads. I mean, the corporates have turned out a lot of their debt. We don't have the crash in energy and raw materials that drove, for example, that huge spike about six years ago in high yield. So I am pretty optimistic that we won't have that kind of a blowout of spreads. Uh, they also are fairly cash rich, although the cash is not evenly distributed among the corporates. Uh, one thing I would say, though, is that uh, when I look at the um, Fed funds futures, for example, Bloomberg, FF, J3, the May futures, it's 5%, okay? It's uh, just under 5%. That's about a half a percent more than the Fed probably needs to do, and we'll get some clarity on whether that's going to happen in the first quarter of 2023. If they uh, start to backpedal a little bit, and I thought, again, Yellen's comments the other day were very important political cover, really, for the Fed, uh, she rarely says anything that's not uh, thought out in advance. Very smart lady. Uh, for example, she ex you know, endorsed a second term for Jay Powell publicly in late 21 when it was being waffled on by the White House. So when she made that comment about bonds, I thought that was very important for the Fed because they can use that uh, as, as uh, part of their holistic cover uh, to, uh, to uh, throttle back if, if the economy slows and inflation slows, as I expect. Thank <laughs> you.